Hi, today I'll be going through how I converted this wine cooler into a reptile incubator that does both heating and cooling. So the first thing I did was to remove the casing that houses all the electrical components of the wine cooler. It is important to note that in order to make a reptile incubator that does cooling as well, you need to start with the wine cooler instead of your regular fridge and freezer. This is because a wine cooler uses a thermal electric cooler instead of a compressor as its cooling element. A thermal electric cooler doesn't have any moving parts, so it lasts a lot longer and runs quieter. It's also not designed to reach very cold temperatures and can be switched on and off constantly using a thermostat. On the other hand, switching compressors on and off constantly would damage it, so if you have a fridge or a freezer that you wish to convert to a reptile incubator, you're limited to making it into a reptile incubator that does heating only. So back to our wine cooler, how it works is that when a current is passed through two metal plates, one plate would get colder than the other one. And then a fan would blow the cold air into the wine cooler, and another fan would draw hot air out from the other plate. This system of cooling can only drop the temperature by about a maximum of 10 degrees, but it is perfect for cooling eggs down during a hot day or a heat wave, especially if the eggs are from a reptile that comes from a temperate region. So now I'm going to add a heating component into the reptile incubator, and the heat source I chose for the incubator is a heat cord. And I decided it will be a lot neater to replace the pre-existing shelves with polycarbonate roofing sheets, that way the heat cord can go between the sheets and be out of the way. This step is completely optional as you can just weave the heat cord around the original shelving and just leave it as that. The length of the heat cord should be distributed across the incubator evenly so that the entire incubator can be heated uniformly. So after I have 6 pieces of polycarbonate sheets cut to size, I started drilling a hole down in the bottom of the incubator to allow me to pass a heat cord through. And after that, I put the plastic cover back on to hide the hole and to keep the heat cord from sliding back out. And within the incubator, the heat cord is passed through all the shelves and it is threaded in between the two layers of each polycarbonate sheet. Off camera, I cut a hole in the casing and 3D printed a frame that accepts the thermostat that I'll be using. The thermostat is an industrial on-off thermostat that does both heating and cooling. Now it's time for me to do all the electrical wiring. This is how the wine cooler is wired before I've made any modification. There is a ground wire that I'm not going to touch because I leave there for safety purposes. There is a live and a neutral wire connecting to the cooling element and it's got a thermostat that turns it on and off. The built-in thermostat in the wine cooler is set to 14 degrees, but the added on thermostat that I'll be using will be set to above 20 degrees, so the cooling would always be turned off before it reaches 14 degrees. In order to convert this wine cooler to a reptile incubator, I'll be adding a thermostat and a heating element. To add both of these components into the wiring, I first started off cutting off the live and the neutral wire. The goal is to connect both wires to the three electrical components, and since the original thermostat will be overridden by the additional thermostat, all the original wine cooler electricals can be regarded as one electrical component. All three components need its own power supply, which means that at the end of the day we'll need it to be connected to both the live and the neutral wire. On top of that, the cooling and heating element needs to be controlled by the thermostat so that the lower boundary is 22 degrees and the upper boundary is 24 degrees. In order to do that, the live wire going to the cooling and heating element needs to go through the thermostat so that it can be switched on and off. Now that I have a clear idea of what needs to happen, I could start wiring. First thing I did was to connect the thermostat to the power supply, as this is the most simple. After that, I connected the neutral wires to the cooling and heating element, as these take a direct route. Finally, a common live wire goes to the thermostat that supplies both the heating and cooling. Within the thermostat, it'll go through two different switches so that it could be controlled independently. Now that each component has its own power supply, as well as the live wires of the cooling and heating goes through the thermostat, the incubator is ready to go. 
There are two temperatures I need to set on a heat cool thermostat. There's the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature. It's always a good idea to add additional thermometers within the incubator so that you're not reliant on the readings on the thermostat. The last thing I did was just to add some stickers so that it looks less like a wine cooler and more like a reptile incubator. Overall, I'm really happy with how this incubator turned out. It's perfect for eggs that require lower incubation temperatures. I hope you like it too. Thanks for watching.